Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is The Long Long Honeymoon, and today we are talking Cracker Barrel. Overnight RV parking at Cracker Barrel. We've been doing Long Long Honeymoon a long, long time. How have we never done a video about Cracker Barrel? I don't know. I guess, you know, to be honest, we really haven't done a ton of overnight parking at Cracker Barrel over the years. That changed this year for us because some of the other overnight options in certain parts of the country are becoming less and less. Exactamundo. Yeah. I think Cracker Barrel is becoming a more important option for overnight parking for RV travelers mm -hmm. because more and more Walmarts are eliminating overnight parking. We've yes. experienced this particularly in Western states. Uh, there were many Walmarts that previously were very friendly to overnight RV parking that have cut it out largely because the privilege has been abused, yeah. I think. So we want to talk in this video about overnight parking at Cracker Barrel, not to be confused with Crate and Barrel. Our friend Salisa often <laughs> refers to Cracker Barrel as Crate and Barrel. I Different wish it was stores. Crate and Barrel. I mean, it would be a, a very exciting shopping experience. You can't get biscuits and bacon at Crate and Barrel. It would be real expensive. We're talking about Cracker Barrel <laughs> Old Country Store. Yes. And there are almost 650 locations of Cracker Barrel scattered throughout the country. So they're very plentiful. And overall, they are very RV friendly. In this video, we're going to rattle off a lot of different tips and some do's and don'ts for overnight parking at Cracker Barrel. First of all, not all Cracker Barrels allow overnight parking. In certain situations, local ordinances may prevent overnight RV parking. So the only way to know for sure is to call the location ahead of time. Yes. The other thing I would say is some stores are not RV friendly because they simply don't have the space for it. Simply because their parking lot is tiny, it would just eliminate the majority of their parking for other customers. So something that I would suggest that you do when you're looking for a Cracker Barrel. Two resources that are pretty reliable are RV Parky, which is an app, and then the Campendium app. Between the two of those, you'll usually find the Cracker Barrels that are available for overnight parking, and you can actually read recent reviews from people that have said, yes, we stayed here, it was nice, it was great, whatever. The other thing I would recommend you do is look it up on like Google Maps and do an aerial view of the parking lot so you can sort of see the layout and see before you get there if they have a lot of parking, if it's going to be tight, if they have designated RV spaces. You know, it just sort of gives you a better idea of what to expect when you get there so that you know going in like where you're going to be parking before you even get there. You know, something you may notice, especially as you travel on the interstates, is you'll see Cracker Barrel billboards. And those locations that are RV friendly will often have it indicated on the billboard yeah. that you'll see when you're approaching that particular store. Just something to watch for. And if you're somebody that doesn't get there in time to eat, like usually we're getting there late at night, like 9 or 10 o'clock. And, of course, they're closed by that point for, for dinner. You can wait and eat breakfast the next morning. Got the old-timers breakfast. Grandpa's Country Fried Breakfast and the Cracker Barrel's Country Boy Breakfast. Apparently the Country Boy eats more than Grandpa. So when you arrive at the Cracker Barrel, assuming it does allow overnight parking, you will see there is designated typically RV and bus parking in yes. the parking lot. And so obviously... For a lot of them. The ideal choice would be to park in Siberia or at least, you know, park in the far regions of the parking lot, leaving the best spaces available for the visitors who may arrive to go to the restaurant. Now, if you've never been to a Cracker Barrel, they advertise themselves as an old country store. And if you have never been inside one of these places, the first time you walk in, you may be a little confused because you're thinking it's a restaurant, but you will always enter through a storefront. And how would you describe the old country store? It's in a way they're selling nostalgia, yeah. <laughs> but there's also they really have a little bit of everything. I think it's a place where everybody can find something that they would be interested in looking at, even if it's for five minutes. They have some clothing. They have jewelry, like, you know, costume jewelry. They have candles. They have books. They have all sorts of trinkets that you could decorate your house with. They have Christmas trees, Christmas ornaments. They have lodge cast iron skillets. All sorts of things like that you will find in these stores. There's also toys for kids. There's games. Like I said, a little something for anybody. I think it's a good place. My mom used to always go in there to get like stocking stuffer kind of items, you know, like for Christmas. So it's that kind of 
stuff. Kitsch and knickknacks yeah. is what they have. She's already shopping. We haven't been inside 10 seconds. She's already picked out two things she likes. And it kind of reminds me of being in a theme park. You know how when you get off the theme ride, you step right into a store? Yeah. Well, they reverse the formula. <laughs> you step into the store first, and then you'll go into the restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, the entrance to the restaurant is in the back of the store. Mm -hmm. And there will be someone who will greet you there and seat you in the restaurant. Yes. Now, uh, as far as the food and the restaurant, restaurant goes, I've always known Cracker Barrel for its breakfast. Yes. and But they offer a wide variety of different foods. Apparently their fried chicken is supposed to be good. Their chicken dumplings is supposed to be good. I'm not a big breakfast fan. Like, breakfast is my least favorite meal of the day. If I'm choosing to go out to eat, it's probably not going to be a breakfast meal. So that's one thing that's always sort of maybe turned me off from staying at Cracker Barrel in the past. But this last time we stayed overnight and we waited until like 1045 when they switched over to lunch to go in. They actually had a lot of great lunch options, like they had BLT sandwiches and stuff like that. And I actually got a salad and baked potato on our very last day. And I have to say it was really good. Like the salad was, all the ingredients were super fresh. I could tell that they made the dressing, you know, it was like that homemade ranch dressing. And then my baked potato was super hot and had all the toppings. So that was a nice option for me to discover because like I said, I'm not really a breakfast lover. So, Like personally, I love breakfast, but I'm kind of picky when it comes to certain elements of breakfast. I was spoiled for so many years with wonderful biscuits from Christy's mother. Yes. <laughs> and But I have to say Cracker Barrel's breakfast is pretty good. I, their biscuits are quite good. So uh, I would typically get biscuits and, and bacon and fried eggs, that sort of thing. Keep it mm -hmm. simple and classic. And they're also known for their hash brown casserole. Yeah, I do like their hash brown casserole. I've just made a terrible ordering mistake. I ordered Grandpa's old-timey breakfast instead of Country Boy Eddie's. We always encourage everyone, if you are availing yourself of the privilege of the overnight parking, definitely give them some business. You know, be a good guest. Mm -hmm. Like, give them some business. Buy something in the store or, you know, have breakfast, have a meal at Cracker Barrel, and just be a polite guest. Don't leave any trash or litter. We have to really be respectful of all of these overnight parking opportunities or they are going to disappear. This is the Cracker Barrel IQ test. They've had these on tables for decades. You must jump all but one T. All right, I'm gonna play it. Uh oh, proceed trouble. Oh no! Oh, I'm stuck. Leave two, and you're pretty smart. Pretty smart. Staying overnight at a Cracker Barrel is similar to staying at a Walmart. The, the key differences are the, the smaller parking lot and because of closer proximity to other guests and visitors to the store, probably shouldn't run your generator in the parking lot and you probably shouldn't extend the awning uh, of your RV because the parking spaces are just a lot smaller, tighter. So here's a look at our campsite last night. No fire pit, no picnic table, no water, no power, no sewer, but we did have a nice patch of asphalt. Yes, desperate times call for desperate measures. You know, on the front area of every Cracker Barrel, there's kind of a, a front porch where they have rocking chairs and stuff like that. So, you know, you can kind of hang out at a Cracker Barrel and feel the nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> Play those checkers and hang out a little bit if you want. So that's it guys, a look at overnight parking at Cracker Barrel. This is really a great choice for so many of us because there are so many Cracker Barrels scattered throughout the country. Uh, as always, we encourage you just to be good guests because we really need to be appreciative of these opportunities for RV travelers. Absolutely. Something else I will say that's nice about Cracker Barrels is they typically are right off the interstate. So it's literally something you can usually see from the interstate. So you don't have to take some big detour to get there. So that's kind of nice that it's usually at like an on and off location. So that makes it super convenient. Yeah, so make sure that you tell them thank you and we appreciate being able to park here and hopefully they'll let us keep doing it for many, many years to come. And by the way, if you have overnight parked at a Cracker Barrel or if you just like visiting Cracker Barrel, 
Post a comment. Let us know what you like to order on the menu. Maybe what you found in the old country store. (laughs) (laughs) Tell us the hidden gems that we should be looking for when we stop there. Yeah, because I have a feeling we're going to be stopping at more Cracker Barrels in the future. If you haven't, please like this video. Subscribe. Click the little bell icon if you want to be notified of future videos. Share it with your friends and family. Until next time, what do we say? Lolo ho. Hey guys, today we're taking a look at the Turbro Pluto Fireside Portable Outdoor Fire Pit. Now, if you have never used a portable outdoor fire pit, you're in for a treat. This is a wood-fueled fire. Yep, it uses that good old-fashioned fuel known as wood. You stack the firewood inside the fire pit, light it, and within a couple of minutes, you have a raging inferno assuming all goes according to plan. What makes these portable fire pits great are these air vents that are located both at the bottom and the top of the fire pit. These air vents will channel fresh air and feed the fire and really create a very powerful combustion chamber inside the pit. Now this particular model is unique for a few different reasons. First of all, some assembly is required. I mean you can assemble it in about 10 to 15 seconds, but you can disassemble the unit and break it down so that it has a smaller footprint for travel. And it does include a nice carry case. When the unit is compacted down, it fits neatly into this carry case and you can take it with you on your outdoor camping adventures. This fire pit also has this flame ring at the top and the idea is due to the airflow, it channels smoke in a vertical direction away from your sensitive eyes. And it also has a removable ashtray on the inside. So all of your mess from the campfire pretty much is collected in this tray and it makes cleanup very easy. You can fold out these included legs at the bottom. So this is an additional nice feature of the Turbo Pluto. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with this fire pit. It weighs around 20, 25 pounds. I found it to be very effective in terms of the combustion. It really makes for a nice, hot campfire. The Turbo Pluto R19 Fireside.